this is actually a good transition to the next topic of factoring methods. And that is in programming language, you want to be able to initialize objects in different ways often. So that's just the core principle of object-oriented programming. And normally you use the factory pattern for this. And a factory is an object whose sole purpose it is to create object to create other objects. So for example, we would have a fruit factory that produces apples and oranges. So why do we need that? Well, because maybe we don't want to call the constructor of apple or orange every single time because we want additional behavior, we want other ways of creating our objects. And normally in your init method, you should never have a too complex initialization logic. Normally in your init method, you only set the attributes you need. So just like this, and that's it. You don't do complex validation logic or transformation logic. If you want something to be created in a more complex way, you would normally, that's a principle of object-oriented programming and that's useful, which you're gonna notice if you're working with your projects, and to do it with a factory. So factories only purpose is to initialize other objects. In Python, we don't really need this pattern in part due to this duck typing thing, because so normally in Java, we would have a food factory, which produces apples and oranges. And then we know that we need this factory method because this factory method then returns something of type fruit. And because apple and orange are of type fruit, it's possible. In Python, thanks to duck typing, we never asked, uh, is an apple a fruit or is an orange a fruit? And so we don't need, also because of dynamic binding, we don't, uh, of dynamic typing, we don't need to have this factory that either returns an apple or an orange, but we can instead use simply factory method to initialize objects in different ways. So our apple could have a factory method to create and our orange could have a factory method to create this apple and this orange, okay? And we can simply call either the apple or the orange and then continue working with whatever we're getting because duck typing doesn't matter if it's a fruit or an apple or an orange, as long as the behavior I want to ask it to do is actually implemented. Okay, so let's get a bit away from our apples and oranges example because it's getting too theoretical, I think here. But just know that we need this factory method if we want to initialize the object in complex ways. And to get back to our actual practical example of the triple here, imagine we want to get, we want to create a triple from one value, where we just want all three elements of the triple to be the same value. Okay, and that then, for that purpose, we would make a factory method. And this factory method is a so-called class method. The class method, again, we see that's uh, a new annotation here. So that's, um, I'm going to get to decorators in a second, but that's a new decorator here. And if something is a class method, the first argument is not a reference to the instance as self is of an object, but a reference to the class. So in this case, it's triple. And the class method, if we're calling it, can then simply use this, can simply use the reference to the class itself to, for example, call the constructor of that. And if we're calling this class method, we're not calling it from instances, but we're explicitly calling it from the class. Okay, so we can make this class method that takes one argument that's called from value, it takes one argument, and thus we can call triple.from value three, and this will return a new triple with all threes in the constructor. Okay, note that we cannot, so if a equals triple one, two, three, so this works. Um, we can also, as we know, call the class, as we just learned, call the class not the triple dot from value, for example, one. Now, if we look at A, we see A exists, but we cannot call A dot from value. We can, but it just doesn't add the behavior here. So it takes the argument here and it doesn't do anything with this instance. So this simply returns b equals, so this returns a new triple and we can say b equals a dot from value. And now b and a are two different things. So, but actually this is not good style because this is not how you're supposed to do it. So always do it like this. All right, 
again, no complex initialization logic, like validation, transformation stuff, whatever. Just don't do too much stuff in your initializer. And if you have complex initialization for objects, which you're going to have eventually, then always use a factory method. Because in factories, the user expects logic to be behind the construction. And when calling simply the constructor, the user doesn't expect there to be much besides setting these 